everyone. Today on Science with Sarah, we've got a really awesome experiment. We're gonna make a slime called Oobleck. It's really cool. I hope you'll stick around for that. We're at Somerset Oaks Academy with these awesome fifth graders, and we say good morning, San Antonio! Stick around for that. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Wednesday, Wednesday, February 22nd. And I'm looking forward to the experiment because of the slime. Looks pretty cool. We love slime around here. Ash Wednesday. Some folks on their way in this morning were like, is that rain? We actually had a few showers yeah. move through early this morning. It was the talk of the newsroom for a short while. Yes, but um, now it doesn't look too bad out there and things are going to heat up. Uh, things are clearing. That rain came through. It was a brief window. We didn't technically record measurable rainfall at the airport. It was just a trace, which is frustrating. We would like to see more than that. But yes, brief area of showers came through. That is pushed to the east. I want to show you the satellite picture. Look at this. You see those clouds down there around Beeville? That's a really cool cloud formation. Gravity waves out ahead of this uh, boundary, we'll call it, that's moving through. Uh, it makes for a cool satellite picture. But where we stand here in San Antonio is behind that, where we're getting some dry air starting to move in. And we'll get some gusty winds this afternoon. Those are two things that uh, don't really go well together when it comes to the risk for grass fires. So the dry air, it'll be here soon, next couple of hours. And then we get gusty winds kicking in. I think we could see a few gusts of around 35. The good news here is the winds will calm pretty quickly that late this afternoon and this evening, and that high fire danger will exist, especially west of I-35. Right now, 71. Dew point is at 64. We are still looking at a southerly wind at 7 miles per hour. But here's a look at the fire danger, and where you see those dark oranges and reds, that's where the fire risk is at its highest. We've got to be really careful today, especially considering we are still very much in a drought. Here's our forecast, 80 degrees by noontime, and that high temperature, 88 this afternoon with westerly winds at 20 miles per hour. It's going to be a toasty day. Humidity does try to come back in tonight. We'll get some fog tomorrow, some changes, some up and down temperatures as we head into the weekend. We'll take a look at that seven day forecast for you coming up in just a couple minutes, but I know we've had a few issues on the roadways this morning. Let's uh, check in on that tail end of the commute this morning with Stephen. How's, how are things going? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, Justin, I'm sorry. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> All right, let's get a quick look around town. Yeah, it has been a very busy morning and check out 35 at Olympia. Uh, still seeing some slowdowns out there. Uh, really, the commute has been a messy one and I'm not sure if the rain brought those problems out on the roadway, but let's take a look at some of the commute right now. Obviously, things have cleared out of here at 37 at Jones Avenue. Morning rush has really dwindled down, but uh, we are not seeing some of the issues dwindle down just yet. Take a look at 281 Southbound at Bitters Road. Now, this is the latest crash that we are going to have to have to keep a close eye on. You you see a lot of the buildup that's taking place out there. Uh, there was a crash by Winding Way Drive that has already cleared out, but that's an area that we're going to have to watch closely because those southbound lanes, a lot of people travel through there each and every day, so watch out. But let's go ahead and take a drive over here because we do have a crash also causing issues along 35 northbound at US 90. Still seeing a buildup along US 90 eastbound as folks are making their way into the downtown area, but check this out. We go a little further west, we find another crash along US 90 eastbound. This one at Southwest 36 Street. It's not causing as many issues out there, but we're still going to have to watch it closely. Wide look, the map does show uh, too many crash icons still remain for me, but we're going to have to watch these areas closely and hopefully we'll have a better update a little bit later on. Check out that crash, US 90 at 36. Other areas, though, aren't too bad. 10 at Probent, you can see traffic is moving along without any trouble there. Same story here at 35 North at Loop 410. We'll watch the roads closely and we'll be tracking things throughout the morning, but hopefully we'll have a better update before the show wraps up, guys. Stephen, thank you. We have a missing person alert to tell you about this morning. Take a look at your screen. San Antonio police say Margarita Garcia has been missing since yesterday. She was last seen on the city's west side on South San Dario Avenue. That's a neighborhood near West Commerce and General McMullen. Margarita is about five foot two in height and she was last seen wearing a red and white shawl, black pants, black shoes and had a brown purse. If you had any information about where she could be, you are asked to call the San Antonio Police Department's Missing Persons Unit. That number on your screen, 210-207-7660. Let's get you caught up on the rest of the day's news on today's 9 at 9. Today, President Biden is meeting with NATO allies of the eastern flank following an impassioned speech in Poland where he said Russia will never win in Ukraine. There's also new information that Russia apparently carried out a failed test of an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of reaching the U.S. 
the day President Biden made a surprise visit to Ukraine. There's controversy over a video from the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol, which has never been made public before. It was reportedly turned over to Fox News by Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy. Critics are now raising security and ethical concerns. McCarthy's office has not responded to the reports. The roughly seven-month investigation into former President Donald Trump's actions in Georgia after the 2020 election ended last week, but the matter is far from closed. A Georgia grand jury four persons that the panel is recommending multiple indictments. It's now up to Fulton County District Attorney to review the recommendations and make charging decisions. There is a mix of wild weather from coast to coast today. A massive winter storm on its way to cause problems for a large portion of the western and northern parts of the country, while the south prepares for record February heat. And on the east coast, a rare event for this time of year, a possible tornado caused extensive damage in southern New Jersey. Over 500 flights have already been canceled for today because of the winter storm in western and northern states. That's on top of the 300 plus flights canceled yesterday. And travel plans are not expected to go any easier for those flying out later this week. Flight delays and cancellations are expected to increase through tomorrow. The Department of Transportation's internal watchdog is launching an investigation into the spike in flight cancellations and delays. It will focus on the DOT's role in the cancellations rather than the airlines. The inspector general wants to identify the causes of the issues as well as check the accuracy of the government's data around flight disruptions. Home buyers are still on the sidelines. Sales of existing homes down in January for the 12th month in a row falling to 4 million. That is the slowest annual rate since 2010. Last month's decline marks the longest streak of back-to-back -back drops going back to 1999. Continued high mortgage rates are mostly to blame as the Federal Reserve battles inflation. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris is expected to announce a break for new and lower income home buyers. People familiar with the move say fees for FHA insured loans will drop by about $800 a year. The changes would take effect next month as the spring buying season kicks in. Today is Ash Wednesday, which marks the start of Lent for Christians. Some people will get ash crosses on their forehead, signaling their acknowledgement of their sins. Lent culminates with Easter. During this time period, those who participate give up certain luxuries to show repentance for their sins. And that's today's Night at Night. Any morning headlines, the Academy Awards taking steps to try to avoid another incident like the Will Smith slap seen by millions around the world last year. And a moose attack caught on camera in Alaska, plus an amazing story connecting baseball's past to the present. RJ Marcus joins us live in the studio with those stories and more. Good hey there, RJ. Good yeah, morning. Yeah, good morning, guys. Yeah, this baseball story is really, really cool. I had a lot of fun kind of putting it together. But uh, also, guys, uh, the Academy Awards, this very interesting move by them. So we'll talk about that here in just a bit. But I uh, want to start with something that is still on many people's minds and maybe their ledgers, the uh, student loan issue here, the long pause on federal student loan payments is set to end later this year and that means that millions of former students will have to begin or resume paying those student debt bills in just months. The moratorium on payments began under former President Trump in March of 2020 at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Then President Biden went ahead and continued it. Right now it's possible that student loan payments won't restart until late August. When payments start back up it will be the first time that many former students have to pay their debt. And it comes as the, during this time when we still wait to see if President Biden's big student debt forgiveness plan survives many, many legal challenges. Okay, guys, many of us remember the Will Smith slap at the Academy Awards last year. How can you forget this? And now the show is adding a crisis communications team to its ceremony this year to avoid just this type of incident. The Academy says the rapid response professionals will be on hand for the March 12th show. The move follows Will Smith's shocking slap of comedian Chris Rock during last year's show after Chris Rock made a joke about Will Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. So Smith said in an interview months after that incident that he, quote, lost it when he put his hands on Chris Rock. And of course, We've now learned that Will Smith is banned from the Academy or all of its events for the next 10 years. Okay, moving on to this 
Really, really interesting story out of Alaska there where a woman is recovering after she was trampled by a moose while walking her dog. I mean, you could see this video behind me showing the moose hit this woman right there during her walk. Her name is Tracy Hansen and her dog Gunner. So they were on her daily walk, but last Thursday, this took a dramatic turn as you could see right there. So Hansen was kicked in the head by a moose and it was all caught on camera by a couple driving by who tried to warn Hansen that the moose was behind her. They actually also tried to scare that moose away. Kate Timmons says that she witnessed the moose rushing towards Hansen and her family Her family immediately jumped to help from that vehicle. Hansen was just shocked to see what had happened. I thought someone had, had like not been paying attention and hit me with a bike or something. I had put my hands up to my head and I'm like, I'm bleeding. My husband was able to help pull her over the snowbank so we could get her in the truck with her dog and kind of get her out of the way. Yeah, and you saw a little gunner right there. He still looked kind of scared from this whole incident there. So Timmons helped Hansen get home and get medical treatment. So got gunner back there too. And Hansen and gunner are back walking the same path. They say that this incident isn't going to stop them from doing that. But of course, she's still recovering from bruising and has three staples in her head. So good. I guess it was good luck that that pedestrian, that family was there passing by in that very moment there. It could have been a lot worse. Okay, next on deck, a baseball stadium in New Jersey is being restored to its former glory. So this stadium is named Hinchcliffe Stadium and it hosted Negro League games in the 1930s and 40s and after years of construction, it will welcome back fans later this May. The stadium is one of the last remaining Negro League baseball parks in America. It was a home for African American baseball players who weren't allowed to play in places like Yankee Stadium, Fenway Park and Wrigley Field. The minor league baseball team, the New Jersey Jackals, will play at the stadium and get this an executive for the Jackals. His name is Bobby Jones is the great grandson of a former Negro League player named Jack Parker, who actually played in this stadium. He's really the reason I played baseball. Um, you know, just always talk to me about the game, always talk to me about the history of the game. What do you think he'd say about the stadium if he were to see it today? I know he's smiling down on us. He's proud of what's going on here. Yeah, just a really, really cool story there connecting the past with the present. So there will also be a museum at this stadium to share more stories of Negro League baseball, which if you read through any history books or see any documentaries like we were talking about, Mark, earlier today, mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's so many great players that came through the Negro Leagues. And yeah, definitely a great way to honor their... Some compelling stories. And if you're ever in Kansas City, Missouri, there's a Negro Leagues baseball museum mm -hmm. on East 18th Street in KC. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Thanks, RJ. Guys. Appreciate it. 910, 71 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Downtown San Antonio is continuously evolving with tons of construction going on. But what is the city's plan for all of these projects? Well, Max Massey shares what the president and CEO of Central San Antonio says about the vision of Downtown 2.0. And he gives us an update on what's happening with all the empty storefronts you might have seen. Plus... Good morning, a Judson ISD teacher landed a second grant to continue teaching students how to play a musical instrument that originated from Africa. The different ways it's impacting students, next. Just about 9.15, a Judson ISD music teacher is introducing students to a new sound and culture by teaching them how to play the Zimbabwean marimba, which is a wooden instrument that resembles a xylophone. Tiffany Huetas joins us live from Park Village Blended Learning Academy to tell us how learning this instrument has helped students in different ways. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Students are not only learning how to play this instrument, but they're growing their leadership skills and confidence. We have music teacher Charles Ford who helped bring this sound to Judson ISD. Good morning. Talk to us about this instrument. Yes, ma'am. So these are really fun Zimbabwean-style marimbas that the students are learning to play uh, all throughout this uh, school from kindergarten through fifth grade and even some performing groups after school. Tell us about the instrument. Where does it come from? So originally it's a Zimbabwean style instrument from Africa. Uh, they, they're built here, really are handmade in most people's garage. So uh, it takes a long time uh, to, to get them here, but when they show up, we have a lot of fun. What does this grant mean for you that you just recently received? The grants mean everything. I mean, these instruments are pretty expensive. So those grants just cut the time in half when you're trying to build a program of this size. 
What other things are students learning along the way? Um, it's really awesome. They learn camaraderie, being able to play together, listening to one another, uh, gross motor skills, moving their body, you know, all of those types of things. And then we have a student with us today who says that she enjoys playing this instrument. Tell us your name and what's your favorite part? My name is Mia, and I like that we get to have fun. Very simple, straight to the point, lots of fun here and in this classroom. And I know you all have something special to show us this morning. Amazing. Y'all did amazing. I'm so excited to continue to share this story. We're going to have more from this class coming up on the noon show. We'll send it back to you. That sounds good. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany. Just enjoyed just now. A lot of talk on the street right now about all the allergens out there this week. Mm -hmm. It seems like every tree and bush except for oak is doing something in the allergen count. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, the trees have been up today, so well, I'll have that pollen count coming up here in just a little bit, but we have a, la a laundry <laughs> yeah. list. A sufferer right uh, here. <laughs> yeah, mold and ash jumped into the modern category mm -hmm. today. So it's, uh, now we're just jumping right into the spring allergens. Yes, we are. Uh, we've got some changes today. Uh, it's, it's humid right now. Dry air is going to start to shift in here soon, and that's going to have a big impact on our forecast. Here's a look at the satellite picture, and you can see that very thin line of showers that came through earlier have now pushed well east of us to already to around Victoria. We mentioned the really cool cloud formation we had out ahead of this, some gravity waves, but we're clearing out now here in San Antonio. In most places are beginning to clear out Forestville, Pleasanton, Carn City, and that dry air now starting to work in. There are a few clouds out near Uvalde, but I don't expect that we'll see much today. A lot of blue skies. And there's the scene outside. We've got 71. That dew point's still high at 64, but that won't be the case all day long. That southerly wind at 7 miles per hour switches around to the west and that dry air starts to spread in. In fact, that dry air is just on our doorstep. Dew points still in the 60s there around Hondo, but Rock Springs at 32, Del Rio at 41, and that dry air starts to push in here. I'd say within the next couple of hours, you'll see the dew point drop. And then by midday into the afternoon, these dew points are in the 20s and 30s. That's very dry air. It's not until tonight that the dew point makes a recovery and uh, helps to create some fog by tomorrow morning. But most of today, it's going to be a very dry scenario. And as we look at the winds, well, winds pick up too. So this is midday. We've got widespread gusts 30 to maybe 35, uh, anywhere from Del Rio over to San Antonio. And then as we get into tonight, yes, the winds calm some, but it's still breezy even around 5 o'clock gusts to 23 here in San Antonio. You pair the, the winds with the dry air, and you've, you've got an issue here with uh, fire dangers we've been talking about for several days now. Here's the new fire danger map from the Texas AIM Forest Service. And I think what we need to point out here is that the highest danger is out west, places like Rock Springs and Del Rio, yes, and uh, Uvalde, Lake even. But as you get towards San Antonio, we're still in the high category. And really anywhere across South Texas, we've got to be awful careful today just the way things are shaping up uh, because not only is it going to be dry and windy but also fairly warm uh, we're forecasting to be up around 88 degrees here in town today 89 castorville 90 in uvalde 93 Carrizo springs this is uh, feeling very very much like spring today let me show you the big picture so this is the system that passed by moved too far to the north so we just got the very tail end of it uh, but it's dry air behind this that is uh, causing the problems. We also know that there's going to be a lot of active weather across the northern half of the country today. A lot of snow. Snow is already piling up. But this is going to be a big issue here from the Dakotas over to Minnesota. Uh, this is going to be sort of, a, I think, a record snowstorm. Uh, already starting to see the snow pile up across the Rockies and again, the uh, northern half of the United States. Let me show you the high temperatures today and show you the difference. Places like Bismarck, well, they're going to be in the negative numbers today. Minneapolis, probably only around 23 or so. But here in San Antonio, 88. What a difference. I mean, there is a huge contrast between the cold and the warm here across the south. And if you're curious, that cold air doesn't really make a push for Texas. Uh, it stays north. So here's how the seven day forecast looks. 80 coming up tomorrow after some morning fog. 
We'll get a wheat frontal boundary that cools us down some Friday. Cloudy with some drizzly conditions. 79 Saturday, 80 on Sunday. Then we clear out and get more warm temperatures to start next week. We'll be right back. Only a couple more science with Sarah's school visits until spring break. And this morning, Sarah Spivey and David Sears out at Somerset Oaks Academy off Babcock near Hebner. They're going to be learning about solubility and doing a slime experiment. We're really excited about it. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Yes, when you say slime experiment, it sounds pretty simple, but there's a lot of science behind this. So put on your glasses, David. We're going to be doing a solubility experiment and solubility, meaning does it dissolve in water? It's a little Experiment. Early for those big words, is it not? And then we're going to right, make something called oobleck. So first, let's mm -hmm. test out the solubility. You're going to want four cups of water, four materials here that we're going to try out. Let's test sand. What do you think? Do you think uh, it's going to dissolve? It's soluble. I don't, I don't think, think it's, it's soluble I either. Think it's gross. It does kind of look gross. Okay, don't so drink so. this, kids. Don't do it. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, let's try the salt now. Salt. Yep. Let's, Let's see. see. What, do you think? what do you guys think? What do y'all think? Soluble, not soluble. Soluble, but yeah. You guys, you guys already did some of these, right? It is. It's salt. Ooh, David. I thought he was going to drink it. OK. <laughs> Let's try the baking soda. Just a little bit of baking little, soda. Yep. a tad? Yep. How much is a tad? That should be good. Was that a tad? And does the baking soda dissolve? Right. Let's see. What, what do y'all think? Does that dissolve? Yeah. It, it does, dissolve, right? right? So what does that make that? There Soluble. All right, see, these kids Last are but not least, cornstarch. All, all of it. Oh, but dump it all in there. Okay, cornstarch is an interesting, interesting ingredient here because as you can see, it turns the water this milky white. It is actually not completely soluble in water. It so is what did y'all decide on the cornstarch? It's what? It's kind, kind of, of not, kind right. of, kind of not. So because it's kind of, kind of not, we can build something called a non-Newtonian fluid. Non another big another word. Big word. Which means that it can exist as both a solid and a liquid. We like to call that oobleck. So we're gonna make oobleck now. What we're gonna do, David, is we're gonna color this half, we're gonna color okay, a I got half cup of water here. Well, we've doubled it, so it's a cup of water. David's using a lot of yellows, that's what he picked. There we go. That's wow, good. That. I like that. So let's that mix it up. Yep, stir it up. We don't want to cream the milk either. Right, exactly. Boom. Okay, that's going to be that's good. It's like the sunset. It is like the sunset. More so normal. this is two okay. cups of uh, cornstarch, but you might see on your screen one cup. That's because we've doubled it. So we're doing two cups of cornstarch here. Ooh, making a mess. And then, David, pour that colored liquid into there, and then you got to just use your hands and mix it up. <laughs> I know. It looks really cool. Okay, here we go. Mix it up good, David. It feels weird, huh? Yeah, it does. It's warm. Yeah, and it's like and it's what like... we're going to see here when we make this oobleck is that it can exist as both a solid and a liquid. Oh. Wow, we made a mess there. I, I want to show like the I'm folks at home mix, something. Stir some dough. Yeah, I want to show the folks at home here okay, something, look, David. If the, look, look at that. It instantly turned into a liquid, like, so it went you can mix it up into a solid and then boom, Bam. instant into a liquid. Are these like cookies? They are kind of like cookies. Okay, so coming up, these awesome fifth graders here at Somerset Oaks Academy are going to make this oobleck. Are you guys excited? Yeah! All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Science with Sarah. As you can say, we've, see we've made some oobleck. -like. These students are going to do that. Why don't you pour the cornstarch into the bowl? There you go. Pour the cornstarch into the bowl. Awesome. Great. Okay, who's doing the colored water? Okay. Here we go. Pour the water into the bowl. Okay, pour your water. Go ahead. Dump away. Awesome. And then you guys are going to mix it up first, okay, right? Who gets to mix and then up? everybody's going to join in on oh, the go fun. Ahead. Go ahead. What what does that feel like? Uh, I don't I don't I just It feels so weird. It feels weird, doesn't it? What's it what's it feel like? It feels like what? It feels like like hard to squeeze like when you're trying to mix it, it's hard to pick up. Yeah. Because it's it's solid down there, and then you kind of wrap it together. Now pick up a piece. Can we use a spring and 
apple. Yeah, if you want to, you can you use a spoon. Pick, pick up, try to pick up a piece and just pick it up and put it in your hand. And now, now watch, see how just, oh. Oh. That, 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 that just, ooh. Is that, is that great or what? How you guys doing over here? Oh, you went with green too. Stir it up with your hands. Stick your hands in there, stir it up, come on. I don't want to get my yellow hands in there. Oh. Stir it up. Oh, no. All right guys, what now, kind of fluid is this? It's non-Newtonian. Non-Newtonian, that's non -Newtonian. right. Oh, they learned that big word since an early hour. It's a lie. Okay, now, now put it, grab some together and then pick it up in your hand. It'll be solid when you pick it up and then it's going to turn liquid. See how it's going to Is that cool or what? It's yeah. cool, What's yeah. What's it feel like? It's like, it's like squishy. It's really squishy. Squishy? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, here we go. Look at, look at, look at this right here. Nice floor. Kind of. All right, guys, what's it feel like? Yes. It feels like, like brick, and then when I like go, it it's feels slimy. like slime, but if it hardened. Yeah. It it feels feels like can it. you try balling it up and seeing what happens? Yeah, pick up yeah. some and roll it together. Uh, roll it. Now, watch uh, what I happens. Can't even, uh, Whoa. See, it's solid and then it turns liquidy. That's so if you punch it. Oh, if man. you punch it, oh, it, it will probably resist you a little bit. Imagine <laughs> you like mud. Wow, I got one over here. What do we got going? Yeah. We got, we got like. How are you guys doing? Eight can hands I test in that bucket. Your yeah. Okay, there okay. We go. Whoa, this is a really good one, That's guys. That's a good one. Ooh. Look at that. Reach into right the there. bottom. Go reach into the bottom. Reach and into then watch. feel that hard stuff down there, watch. and then watch what happens. Whoa. That's, that's this just, that's is awesome. Like fun, isn't it? So the word oublet comes from a Dr. Seuss book with this name as well. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, book. yeah. So it's just a cool thing. So squeeze. Oh, it's so neat, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So what kind of fluid is this, guys? A non-Newtonian. Non-Newtonian. And what does that mean? It means, it means that it's, it's liquid, but it's also a solid. It can exist as a solid and a liquid. Really cool, guys. That's awesome. Great job, guys. Good job. Real quick. Kind of tell me what it feels like. Like slime, but if if you touch it, it gets hard. But then you let it go, and it gets soft. Yeah, like when you roll like, it up. Dig your hand all the way in the bottom, and you can feel. How, see how hard that is? Yeah, now like, pick it up. It feels like Nickelodeon slime. Yeah, it's Nickelodeon slime. Like the way that. you ball it up, it looks hard. Yeah, but then when you open your hand, it all melts. Yeah, it looks like Nickelodeon slime. Like yeah, if really you have you ever seen the show Nickelodeon? Yes. It, looks like Nickelodeon yeah, it really slime. does. It does look feel like, like that. That's awesome. Like, all right, guys. I had to hold so my mic for me because my hands are all gross. So she's holding the mic. So what did what did you learn the today? What was kind of the, fun, the right? key? Um, that away from this? baking soda is a non. It's a non non Newtonian. There we go. <laughs> you got it, man. And what, what else is baking soda? It's a. Starts is it soluble? S. It's all it starts with the S. What is baking soda? It when you put it in water, what happens? Oh, it. Um, it's soluble. soluble. There. there we go. Awesome, guys. So for more awesome science experiments like this oobleck, you can go to Science with Sarah on KSAT.com. All right, guys, wave to your mom and dad at home. <laughs> Back to y'all. Good job, That's guys. That's a lot of fun. Do you see all the colors of slime when they're like waving, green and yellow? That's awesome. <laughs> and I always wonder who has more fun, all the kids? for David and Sarah. I think it's equal. It's probably both. Yeah, pretty fun out there. Looking out with live cam, it's a beautiful day right now. 73 degrees, not too bad, not too hot yet. Yeah, not yet. I can see all the moms right now. They're like, if you're going to do it, do it outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks like fun. That's a fun day at school right there. Uh, it is starting to warm up. I want to show you the pollen count. We mentioned this earlier. Look at this list. It is long. Molds, ash, mountain cedar, hackberry, mulberry, elm. Yeah, mountain cedar came back today out of nowhere, uh, but mold and ash lead the way. They're in the moderate category, so beware. There's a lot floating around out there. As we go and look at the weather headlines, we mentioned this earlier, dry air starting to push in. We'll get some gusty winds today. Those winds do calm tonight, but the uh, combination of dry air and gusty winds means we have a high fire danger, especially west of I-35. Right now we're sitting at 71. Dew point is at 64. That number is still elevated, but that dew point will be coming down soon. 
And in fact, we see those drier dew points just to the west. 41, the current dew point in Del Rio, 30 in Rock Springs. And that dry air is making a push to the east behind a few showers to move through this morning. But it'll be sunny today. Temperatures 80 noontime and then a high right around 88 this afternoon. So well, well above average with that westerly wind anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. What can we expect for the weekend? If you're already making weekend plans, we've got a closer inspection of that forecast here in just a bit. Justin, thank you. Slow, slow downs right now on southbound 281. We had an accident clear just in the last couple of minutes. The record just left the scene. Looks like the hero trucks are just in about to pick up all their cones and head out, and they are doing that as we speak. But it's going to take a little while for all that to clear. You see it's backing up all the way to winding way. But again, that accident is now cleared. This should be easing in the next five to 10 minutes. We also had another accident reported northbound 35 at Cesar Chavez, but uh, that one is no longer showing up on the trans guide cameras that we have access to slow down right there at that ramp. But I think that's normal flow over the last couple of years. We've seen a lot of construction projects here in the Alamo City, more businesses, more art in downtown San Antonio. So what is the plan and what can we expect? Max Massey met with the president and CEO of Centro San Antonio to give us a glimpse into the future. Downtown 2.0, the next evolution of downtown, and we're in that right now. The heart of downtown San Antonio, or as Matt Brown refers to it, the business district is on the rise, metaphorically and literally. The future is this, is this really, really fully complete downtown. And here on Broadway, we have seen so much construction over the years. Not only is it for practical reasons, but it's also for beautification. Here's the thing. All of it, all of it should be done by this June. The vast majority of what's going on is, is functional and uh, enhancing the quality of life for the people working uh, and living downtown. So you get wider sidewalks, which are much nicer to walk on. This overarching plant really revolves around people living, working, and playing downtown. And if you drive around town, you may notice some empty spaces, empty storefronts. Some of the retail spaces are, are empty and, and they're slowly coming back in. Voodoo Donuts, Double Standard, Sojourn. I mean, Chick-fil-A is coming, right? Like, they're coming back but it's gonna take a while. To help fill the storefronts, promote San Antonio companies, and prop up local business owners, there's a program now in place through pop-up shops. Another pop-up series is gonna come up in this spring, and we're hoping over time that we can just have a permanent location where we're just constantly bringing in entrepreneurs, letting the test drive retail, and then get them uh, get them into retail around downtown. So that's the way we can partner with the property owners and go, well, you've got a spot. We have some possible entrepreneurs. In terms of living downtown, Matt says there is a huge demand and the supply is growing fast. But look at 300 Main. Like, I feel like every day a new floor on that apartment building goes up. And that's going to be hundreds of apartments, right? And hundreds of people live in downtown. And in the ground floor, I know, they'll have cool shops and restaurants and bars. We are growing population-wise. And with more companies, more students, and more families, comes more apartments. Next five years, I think we're in the five to 10,000 unit range if everything comes online. Uh, we forecast a need for housing upwards to 100,000 people downtown over the next, let's say, decade to 15 years. All in all, Matt and Centro San Antonio have big plans for the city, and right now the sky is the limit. The future of downtown is going to be a complete neighborhood. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Growing by leaps and bounds every year. 940, 73 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. When we come back, Jesse Degollado is going to tell us about a historical tour happening today. Now we'll highlight some of the safe stops here in San Antonio back during the Jim Crow era. says good job yeah. all right welcome back 944 we were just looking at this image behind us here one of my favorite movies in the last five years today there will be a bus tour back in time by the san antonio african-american community 
archive and museum to show some of the places that were listed in the Green Book back then. A Green Book was an essential travel guide during the Jim Crow era, and traveling could be treacherous for African Americans during that time. Our Jesse Degollado gives us a preview of the stops expected along the way. Coming out the side door of the Carver Public Library. Let's see. I think the Ritz must have been from here to there. Branch manager D.L. Grant says he would see what was left of the old Ritz Motel, where it said Louis Armstrong what stayed became a library parking lot. What appear to be condos in the middle of the block is where the Mason Hotel once stood. It's really startling because this once was a, like a thriving black business area. Owned by her aunt, Rachel Mason, the hotel is somewhat visible in the background. Others, like the Zumbro Hotel in what is now St. Paul Square and the Hicks Beauty School, were among the hotels, restaurants, and shops listed in the Green Book, used as a travel guide in a segregated America from the 1930s up until civil rights became the law of the land. Safe places where you could go and you could count on finding accommodations you needed. Black travelers knew not to leave home without it. Carry your Green Book with you, it says. You may need it. And I certainly understand that. I understand that only too well today. She says as a child, she just knew her aunt's hotel was not only a place for community gatherings, but also welcomed visitors. The baseball players, the musicians, and the, the train travelers. Who would rely on the Green Book in order to travel with dignity. Learn more about the places in San Antonio listed in the Green Book during the SACAM bus tour Wednesday afternoon. We have the link on our website. Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Fascinating story. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Dustin joins yeah. us now. Very spring-like weather. Jump right into summer this afternoon, right? Yeah, we are. It's going to uh, close in on 90 degrees, I think, uh, in several spots, maybe even here in San Antonio. So it's just a one-day thing, but it is going to be very, very hot today. The, the big story will be the dry air. We're watching dew points very carefully because those numbers are starting to drop off. Right now, we still have a dew point of 64. That's still pretty sticky, but... Those drier dew points are just, and I mean just, to our west. These will be uh, pushing in on a westerly wind, and we'll see that dew point drop off pretty significantly, uh, really, uh, for all of the area today. Here's a look at the dew point trend. So, yeah, we're still in the mid-60s, but by the next couple of hours, we'll drop into the 30s and 20s with regard to the dew point. And that is very dry, and then we'll see that dew point jump back up uh, tonight into tomorrow morning. It's going to be sort of a whiplash situation, a lot of ups and downs. But the main story this afternoon is that very dry air because we're going to couple that with some gusty winds, winds gusting around noontime close to 35 miles per hour in a corridor here along Highway 90 into San Antonio and up I-35. You see the gusts out near Uvalde and Del Rio 2930, not too terribly strong. But there's enough there with that very dry air that we do see a significant fire threat today. By tonight, the winds do start to calm some. It's going to take until tonight for them to completely kind of lay down. But uh, we're still seeing some breezy conditions even at 5 o'clock. Here's a look at the red flag warning. We showed you the fire danger earlier. This is the product issued by the National Weather Service. Bottom line, you see these counties in pink. That's where our highest fire danger will be today with winds 15 to 25 and humidity levels less than 15%. But I would say even here in San Antonio and even east of San Antonio, we've got to be careful today uh, with the current fire situation. Forecast temperatures this afternoon, 88 here in town, 83 Fairfax Ranch, 84 Bernie. You're in nine, at 90 in Uvalde, uh, Carrizo Springs, Pearsall, Pleasanton, all places that could jump into the 90s today. Probably one of the warmer spots in the country. Uh, and uh, 91 Kennedy, 86 Gonzales. Bottom line, it'll be hot, it'll be dry, and it'll be windy. Uh, right now, we're looking at 71 at the airport. So the winds at about 7 miles per hour. We did have a few very light showers earlier, if you can believe that. It was quickly pushed east, and we did not technically pick up any measurable rainfall at the airport. Still a few showers up there around Austin, but those are moving east. And that thin line of showers that came through our neck of the woods now moving into Houston, racing eastwards. And there will be rain for East Texas and Louisiana today. But we're on the dry side of things as this system progresses east. And you can really see the jet stream here pretty clearly. Dips out west and then 
curves back to the north here across the Great Lakes, but it's in this corridor here where there is some bitter cold air and a lot of snow flying at this hour. More watches and warnings today, more blizzard warnings. There's going to be a ton of snow up across parts of the Dakotas, Colorado, uh, even parts of uh, Iowa and Minnesota. It's going to be very, very wintry. And then south of that, warm, maybe some record highs in spots. So quite a contrast across the country. Uh, the forecast die. These are what we're expecting this afternoon. Negative three in Bismarck, seven in International Falls, one in Casper. South of that, though, 90s, 90 in Orlando, 88 here in San Antonio. Again, one of the hot spots probably in the country today. 80 tomorrow after some morning fog. We get a weak frontal boundary through, or at least it stalls out around the area Thursday into Friday. And I think that does cool us down some on Friday. Right now we're shooting for 70 degrees. Could be kind of drizzly in the morning, but lots of clouds. Morning drizzle Saturday and Sunday, so some damp mornings, mostly cloudy afternoons. Very small chance for shower as we get into early next week, but then it clears out again. So nothing rainfall-wise to get excited about, but a lot of kind of ups and downs with temperatures. Yeah, a lot of warm weather ahead. Yep. Thank you, Justin. 951, 75 degrees. Big red boots are taking over social media when we come back. What it is about these boots that have so many people wanting to wear them. The big red boots are not the ones Nancy Sinatra had in mind. These boots are made for walking. Nope, these boots are made for flaunting. Fashion influencers are styling them. It's a goofy shoe. I give them a 10 out of 10. Even influencers of the grandpa generation, wrestler Seth Rollins pretends stomped his opponent wearing big red boots. Ever since they went on sale for 350 bucks and sold out in minutes, fashionistas can't shut up about the big red boots created by the art collective Mischief. They do make you want to touch them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube sneakerhead Steve Natto found that out when he wore them to SneakerCon. And some people asked to touch the shoes. How do they feel? Well, the top part is flexible. But the bottom part is is definitely not. Steve says they're comfy. He wore them all day without pain. Their creator describes them as cartoonish. Some refer to them as Astro Boy boots. And though they're easy to put on, getting them off can get you stuck if you're not wearing your perfect size. My foot got stuck, so I had to do I had to do what I had to do, man. Now they're showing up on everyone from Puss in Big Red Boots to the character boots from Dora the Explorer to Tony Soprano paired with a bathrobe. People wanted to buy them right off Steve's feet offering. I got like 800, 900, 1,000. I think I got like 13 or 1,400. They just kind of kept going up. For now, they're the it shoe. Are you ready, boots? They're not about to get the boot. Start walking. Genie Mouse, CNN, New York. We actually know a guy that bid and won a pair recently. Oh he works God. at our station in Houston now. Wow, a nice pop of color, I guess. Go figure. Order now. <laughs>